still there, ain't you? You crickets. Not acting or not acting right, and there is a right. But for as many people who don't want to know that or don't want to listen for it, there is a right, and you've got to really assert it rightly. This is BTW RLM 342. For those of you on PastCast looking for the content in the search engine, if you happen to hear this broadcast and want to know where I'm talking from, you'll have all the tabs placed in a uh, blogcaster on reallibertymedia.com where you can find a whole lot of other uh, archives there as well and all the other broadcasts over on Real Liberty Media, RLM Radio. Thank you to everyone who is simulcasting, the jewels at UCY TV and Sound Minds at least. I know that uh, regularly, more regularly at the Sound Minds and appreciate all the feedback on that. Uh, again, I don't do the chats real well while I'm broadcasting, and I don't really do the chat generally. Uh, just kind of come in, make contact, and focus on what I need to do. A lot, a lot of work to get done, and so it's I appreciate anybody else's help to get the broadcast out. I'm really not very good at doing that generally. And uh, those of you that just go ahead and repost the broadcast, I appreciate that wherever you're doing that. And so let's get with this. Um, lot in my mind today. I always have so much to, to come to my mind right as I'm going to broadcast to do to talk to y'all. I've got my tab set up and, and then I get these thoughts in my mind of all the little things that seem to creep in through the week. In some regard, they're serious problems that I just I don't know how to even t- uh, approach them. Uh, people get so set in their ideas and ways and we're really just as a society, we're really ignorant. You know, I say that my mind says, you know, don't sound all so arrogant, but it's true. I can show what the subject matter I talk about. It, it's a knowledge that we're an ignorant society. And it's every, you know, when I come on to here, all those things that happen during the week that cause questions that need explanation just run, rush through my mind, like more important than what I've got worked up. And so we got a lot of work to do as a society. And all I can do is just keep focus. I keep the blinders on and I keep plodding along one foot after the next. Uh, every week, I, all the week we do work, and then this weekend I come and try and tell you, here, look at folks, you've got a problem, stop complaining about it, let's let's roll our sleeves up and go do something. Now, I'm not going to go too far off tabs to start with here, but I just tell you, there's tons of things going on that people just don't quite get the idea. And I'm going to, I wasn't going to go, I'm going to say that this part I'm going to say. Lots of information out there. And I'm going to, and, and this came up in three things this week. Be, listen to what I'm saying very, very carefully. What you know is not how you, what action you take. In fact, as I mentioned in one, one point, situational awareness is not avoidance. In this case, there was going to be, be careful, be detriment if you don't do the right step. That you know of a harm or of, of a future com- a danger doesn't allow you to avoid it. That knowledge isn't, isn't your power. And so as I knowledge is not power. And so li- listen very carefully what I'm telling you. I know I go fast and I speak pretty quickly. But you, you have to understand the knowledge that I'm giving you is your, your starting point. It doesn't even give you situational awareness. In other words, the knowledge of something that might be there to be looked at. There's a path to take. That's not even how you do it. That's just more knowledge. At some point, you have to settle down and, and use what you know as in application. And even the knowledge that you know may not be applicable directly. And so I, I guess I'll, I'll end there because there's just so much I can go talk about. And it just means nothing to anybody uh, without them having, you, them, you having the question. That's why I say jump into something and maybe I can be a little, a lot more definite. But one, let me, back into generals. We, uh, general, general, yeah, generals, uh, military consequence, the generalities. And not so general when you get right down to it. Uh, this should focus a whole bunch of people. You, you, everyone is involved in this, whether or not you understand this about, uh, about these things I talk about. Uh, all the fundamental things that are under attack you need in your life or are used against you. And we tend to think we want to know. We take advice from people that are the experts that are supposed to be the licensed one without ever noticing the license is actually just permission to do an illegal act. And those of you that haven't heard that, all you got to do is go look or study a little bit more about licenses, you'll also notice they're connected to commerce. Uh, you also notice, and I'll say this, because this is coming up again, and it comes up, all this stuff keeps coming up. Again, uh, you'll realize and see, relative to economy, and a lot of this is based in economic 
constraints as well. The uh, at least the servitudes are. And without get, focusing on anything particular, because there's a couple things. Everyone will say, "Well, it's the FRN." And this, no, it's okay. It's that that too. But there's other things as well. That you notice they're in a commerce section, which is in in government regulation authority. Government regulation authority, you know, relative to to wealth or financing or monetary policy, it's in a tertiary economy. In other words, there's two other levels below it. You don't get to government until you get to two until you establish the two below it, which are the what we understand as the secondary economy and the primary economy. You destroy your primary economy, you destroy the rest. And this is where I I am in the primary economy when I'm talking about all this all these things I talk about. And so if you understand another comment I made back to someone who asked a question, and thank you for the forward uh, uh, from Facebook, because I don't have Facebook. I said, you don't, you're not looking to argue, you're looking for the rules of the condition to play out in the way they're supposed to and enforce those. In other words, instead of taking all your knowledge that you think you got a millstone around your neck, you just look at the system and say they have to have writings and evidence that prove a point. And uh, I told you, look and see whether if they, when they try to make a statement, if that's not a, a felony, a, a lie, a, a, you might know here it is a perjury. Uh, but, you know, we fight and argue, but really is, is the burden is on the one who's making the claim. Is there evidence of this stuff uh, in the record? Why argue before you confirm that there's an evidence? And then once you see it and the court's going to recognize it, if it's wrong, you get to attack it, don't you? So we, we take on too much, knowing knowing that you, you have all these uh, problems. And this happened to me years and years ago. I realized those all those problems that you find that we hear on the Internet that the government has with this, that we have with them, are actually your answer. But you don't get at it by saying, oh, well, I'm not that. I'm not this. You just prove. You look, one of the options is you ask for the, uh, you, you declare you do not see the evidence in record. Now, that's a little esoteric unless you understand, you know, you got something to point that out to. But this is where I want to point to because everyone wants to avoid this court stuff. And I'm saying that's the that's the law determined. And so if you follow the rules of engagement in that, whether or not the system wants to, you make a record a whole lot better than what they want you to make. And you make the right challenges without getting yourself all beat down. What's interesting, I look out at all the learned ones out there. Uh, you think you vote for someone who's got knowledge. They don't have knowledge. These are local commissioners or city councilors. They got nothing. They don't, they're just people who uh, think they're going to do something or an agenda to do something. And you haven't found that out either. Uh, you have judges that don't know. And I say this, uh, I know it sounds like I know more than a judge or whatever, but you got to just look at the problem of the, uh, when you see, when you finally find that the government can't touch certain things and they are, you realize you're either dealing with a criminal or someone who's pretending to be someone of authority. And that's how fast that comes out. If you have the record you can establish or have it developed that the record doesn't exist that they're relying on. And, boy, you know, I just say this stuff in my mind. If you knew this few things I just told you, life would go a little bit smoother. You're not going to get rid of the criminal or the war. What you're going to do is you're going to engage it a whole lot different. You're not going to put your, your chin out there to get whacked knocked out okay so let me just get to the point of where all this i'm looking at my tab and not getting there but this is where people you know, all week again it's always continuous for me i just shake my head about why, why people discuss things the way they are but they get reported over and over and people buy into the condition and they're and they're invested you're in in this case i'm going to go to the roads folks you're invested every one of you is invested in your roads and even down to the trail whether or not you understand that in the the lack of pavement. If you don't ever seen lack of pavement, if you've ever been on a road, you've never been on a road without pavement, then you don't know what I'm talking about as a trail uh, that even offshoots from the lack of pavement road. Pavement road. But there's a big problem in this country. In the West, it's known more than it is in the East. In the East, it's pretty well forgotten. And yet, let's remember about the each state is coming into the union if, as it does. And let's not go into all that. Uh, let's not challenge all that. Let's just take this as it is because it's. It has to be a declaration of where you're going to fight this. I just assume go ahead and fight it. We have some stuff. We're going to hold it again, and you can't take it from us. And here's why. And you, by doing so, you're a criminal if you're coming in an official capacity, as you hear me talk about all the time. Uh, it's and it's all in these rudimentary, fundamental things that create our nation. They're typically in the primary economy sector. It's supposed to be untouched. And when you find the rules about this that it's to be untouched, 
then you'll start to appreciate, I think, what I've been saying. Now, what I'm getting at here, these roads, counties are a fighting in the west, and the east would have the same underlying authority, and the west took the authority here as well, uh, equally, with all the same footing. And so if you think the east, would, if you're in the east and you don't think this matters, well, it doesn't matter as much because most of your property is understood to be under private disposition, most or state, if you will, or that didn't go private. Or, or in very small areas, are still in federal control. And those are the interesting places to go look. Because they're still closing your roads out there, and they don't have an authority. If and if we give any any indication that is valid that against a grant, the 1976 Public Lands Management Act uh, that uh, is said to have gotten rid of a newer any newer acquisition uh, disposal, I should say. Excuse me, not acquisition. That's a wrong way. Uh, disposal uh, that you understand this underlying road law grant. And you understand that's in the primary economy. And I do this because, I'm saying this because you need to tie all these things together. Maybe it's better if, when I say it this way, you'll organize your thoughts up better on how you're addressing it. And you'll see the jurisdictions aren't supposed to cross up. And, and you'll find out what I'm talking about when we talk about jurisdiction and why it's important to establish it. Not that you have to prove it. If they come and claim it, you just put the burden on them to prove that they can touch you. Uh, and you don't claim anything. I mean, this is why I say you're innocent. And you're in something that you're lawful, so, and you have, in my case, uh, I mean, my, my discussion here in primary economy and that you have a right, that's, that's in disposal grants. You have another, another power against an encroachment, even if it comes underneath the color of law, that these disposals are permanent with relative to the use of land, and there's a line, long line of authorities about that. Again, once you figure this, if you see this, it's not a, this is not a question. This is not like a game. This is really just finding those that will steal away your life. And it's pretty quickly that, getting back to here, the, the roads that you all are enjoying everywhere uh, have a have a um, bunch of jurisdictions over the top. Whether or not they you believe they can control those jurisdictions, that the primary disposal part of the ground over which the use that was established by your forebearers in the, in the disposal gave you certain rights is uh to that to that land permanently forever now forever is only conditioned by the condi by the situation where they may want to alter that or they may want to move that if they need to eliminate that they have to find a provision elsewhere to replace it so when a, a right of way an ingress and egress is established it can't be destroyed it has to be moved or the capacity has to be built in near and close to where the use of that road would be co compensated. The point is, these these disposals of your underlying land uh, are dis are to the pe the people. Now we got this funny word public. I don't want to get lost in that right now either. But they're to the people. They're to the people who accepted the grant. The grant of what? The grant of the public domain for a use that Congress granted under its obligation to the people to fulfill the need and the use of the land to its best, uh, its its best, I would just say, just the way you make it work, the way you produce it the best is all written into the law. It's nothing, there's nothing in the law that shows that you should deplete the, the public domain or your private property. That would be, you know, it's kind of dumb to even think about it, just deplete your land and then, then what do you do? But anyway, getting off over to here, your underlying ingress and egress disposals, a number of articles have been written by uh, by by reporting stations, the like alternate news. I don't know. I don't the blog places. I don't know people who are interested in all this, and they keep writing. And they're not. It's not the problem of the blogsters that are doing this. So the reporting. It's the problem of what the people that they're reporting on think regarding what they're doing, respecting the land called the highway or trail. And uh, let's get back to the, I want to quickly go back. This is primary economy in the base foundation of your land. Your uh, motor vehicle code sits underneath government regulation in the tertiary economy. It's commerce. They're totally, that's totally different. And so now if I can give you a place to put these two, it might help you different and see differently in a different way. This happens to be economics and the control of how economics is done versus the primary disposal, which is not supposed to be affected. The distinction between your granted right to use the road relative to what we would call 
the motor vehicle regulated under the motor vehicle code. And I'm not talking about driving by right. I'm talking about people getting it wrong about how they defend your roads. And you should be involved with this because when you have the better answer for these people, not only will you speed the process up, you'll eliminate the threat and get your roads back that you can establish have existed under by law, not your opinion. And you'll have the better word in your mouth about what you're doing. And I see, this is my, my gripe, I guess, this week. Everybody seems to use the wrong words to try and reiterate what they think they're doing. And someone like myself who looks at it immediately can see the failure. You can immediately see where the track, where the train went off the track. Whatever they were, the cart, the cart went off, got disconnected from the horse. You can see it immediately once you understand what the condition is. Let me read this first story. I want, I want people to understand. I wish, really, I hope you're listening. I don't, I don't even know. I don't get reflection of it, so I don't know. But this cleans things up pretty quick, too. Now, you're going to get resistance and all, but it doesn't matter. The, the, as I said, I've told you this, and this works out. It's been working like this for years. One commissioner, one seated decision, one someone in a seated decision who has the law prevails against even a, a, a majority rule. Because it eventually comes out that the law must prevail in this country, the law of the land. And I know it doesn't look like much, but there's not enough of you standing up to prove that out. I know we do it, so it's not a question to me. Getting to these roads, getting to how it's stated wrong. I want to read this very first story. This is not about the people reporting. This is about what the people that they're who they're reporting on and how they characterize their problem and how. It, when I look at this stuff, I really don't know: is this ignorance or is this a planned destruction? to steal off all your lands and then make it look like you don't have rights. You folks don't have, you make it look like you don't have rights through this, these representatives. And if you start to understand this dynamic, you're going to start to understand why you really need to roll up your sleeves and go find these things and fix them. Because there's a coming a time, and I just saw another story, that they're not bashful about putting this adjunct policy in your land. They did it with, a, they didn't do it as adjunct, they did it as regulation authority you didn't understand was in commerce or tertiary economy authority and not in primary disposal. Uh, they did it now, they're doing it now as we sued in 2013. The university system, the academics, the lawyers, the bar, the political parties stealing your land by doing adjunct policy that circumvents your law of the land. And it makes it look like it's correct. And this is how we attack it all the time. I told you, we bring the law, we displace all of that. The foundational principles displace all others. I'll just say it again. County continues effort to assert control over U.S. roads. Right there, that title. Those of you that's listening to me, can you, in your mind, I'll give you one little moment here. How many things did you see wrong by that title? This is not about the writer, and this is not about this story, this report. It's that, well, I guess it is a little bit, because there's no check and balance to go, there's no, no media to go check the truth, because they don't know the truth. What's wrong with that? That title tells me there's a, there's a, a house of fire that needs to be put out, N not that there's a, a battle going on. Anybody, listen, folks, county continues effort to assert control over U.S. roads. Is that even a valid uh, object for a county to do? Those of you who listen to me for years, you should be able to answer that pretty clearly. And how many errors are made on the county's part to do, to, to do this? Let me go read the first paragraph, and then I'll maybe I'll answer that title. Give you a chance to, to really work this through. This is not that hard. It's not that confusing. And by these kinds of things, your representatives are stealing your land. Your usufruct. And uh, Vinny did a, a joke. The governor, government doesn't give a usufruct. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't cuss, folks. It's an actual word. So it's something that's someone else's that you don't own, but you have right to use. And so you have, and it's equal to everybody. I'm talking about equality. These are pretty. These disposal laws are pretty equal until you can make a claim, unless you make a claim that's exclusive, and that's in the law too then you hold against all others, even the government itself. This is not hard, okay? And this is forever, or in the mining law sense, it's only for as long as you maintain the claim. And that's kind of easy to do as long as you work it, right? That's what it's all about, using the land and using it within the context of the grant. Because someone somewhere said we need to use the land this way, and because the rest of the people need, need, to, need the basic natural resources coming from this public land or public domain, as I would like to identify for you in this case of disposals. 
Public land is the land that's yet to be disposed under government, United States federal management. Public domain is that which is disposed that was open to the general public to do so. And if you don't get that distinction, you're missing the trick. Public land is not necessarily public domain. It certainly has no, different jurisdictions. You can be an inholder on public domain. You're not an inholder on public land. And But get over to the point about these disposals. So let me read the first paragraph. I'm going to read again the title. County continues effort to assert control over U.S. roads. I'm asking you, what's wrong with that? There's a number of errors in that. Not by the rider, by the condition. What they're doing on the ground in Montezuma County, the commissioners are continuing their effort to assert management rights of historic trails and roads on federal lands and are also considering raising the budget to pave more county roads. I'm going to end the discussion right there. You really need to read out and be able to parse through this. That's all the information I need. I have now another problem that they've incorporated that they think they're doing. County continues an effort to assert control over U.S. roads. I repeat myself because people miss these things, and they miss them over and over and over, and they make an issue where there was, doesn't exist one, and they give someone else the authority to, to deny you your, what you, you, the people, have the right to. The county, okay, so did anybody get the idea? Do you have do you have the answer to this? Even in one or two answers, any one answer you come up with that shows it's a problem just destroys the, the Montez Montezuma County Commissioner's efforts. They continue the effort to assert control. Can a county assert control on land that's not theirs? And they continue, folks. It means they've been doing it for a while. Someone needs to go talk to these people. And there's other counties that are doing this. So everywhere, anyone around these areas can jump in and help. Assert control. Under U.S. roads. So they've identified these are U.S. roads. Well, that's an interesting problem. I don't know about U.S. roads. I know about service roads they use for ma management. Okay, so right there we have, what, three or four problems. No, they can't assert control over U.S. Uh, others' roads, let alone the United States government's roads, if it's got gov government roads. And so you just, me, you just heard me throw a question in. How do we resolve that? You just you got to go find the law and find out the title, the chain of title to all this. Is was it available? Was it granted? Was it disposed? And to whom? And then maybe what happened after that? This, this is just complete law of the land here. No one gets this. I don't see why anybody. I don't see anybody really getting this. Oh, you want to drive by right? You want to do the? Oh, you want to complain about the county closing some highway up up in the mountains or letting the letting the four federal federalities do it? But you won't run, sit down and read, and read the most basic stuff to understand it. In that, when you understand uh, the, even the most basic document, which you can find, the Jefferson Mining District, go roll down a little ways till you find the Bagel Law and look under highways and click that. There's a PDF that'll go through all of this. In fact, that's why I, I turn people over to there. I get no comment back about how to use it, but that's okay. See, there's no real interest to solve problems. It's confusing. Well, that just shows you that we got a lot to learn, and it's not that hard. It's all done in a few pages relative to the roads. County continues effort. Well, okay, they've been wasting a lot of time, and I, they have been. County, Montezuma County has been doing this for a long time. They won't listen. Lots of counties do this. Montezuma County is continuing an effort to assert management rights. Folks, management rights. Does the county have management rights over federal land? I'll just leave it in the generic federal land. we we'll use public land. Public domain, these are all different. I, I made a, I made a video of a, um, I think it was a, this, or a, a, an audio about the public land layer cake years and years ago. That's all I'm looking at here again. The same information. But can a county assert management rights over United States roads on the public land, federal land? Well, the question, the answer is right there. No, it can't. It doesn't matter how historic uh, uh, and roads on federal lands are if they haven't been established or they haven't identified that they've been established correctly can the county just make the claim well not really either unless there's a state law that allows it so we got another problem implied in that first paragraph as well if you understand what i've been telling you and you've been thinking and applying this stuff instead of just thinking it's interesting information knowledge that you have i'm now showing you how you take that knowledge and start to work it into more knowledge more awareness of what the condition is and then come up with a, a, a 
the basis for how you're going to move, and then you have to come up with the strategy. So there's a your knowledge is like five steps behind where it's going to be that you're going to apply all this. And then we hear this raise, they're going to consider raising the budget to pay more county roads. Well, county roads are not U.S. roads, are they? And county roads aren't undisposed historic trails or roads that you are putting a question on, are they? So they com commingled two concepts here, just in the first paragraph. Now, it's taking me, what, I'm talking 20 minutes here. My eyes saw this. As soon as I read those words, my eyes had all that I'm telling you the last, in a flash. Is How fast, not flash somebody, but a flash. It's it's just comes out, the error is immediate. The errors are immediate. That's why I say this stuff happens fast. You don't have to, this is not belaboring anything. It's belaboring to try and tell a bunch of people that don't understand this to go to understand it this way because when you read this I was done at the title I was further done uh, clarified and confirmed second witness in the first paragraph we've got some serious trouble uh, amount, uh, with the Mount Montezuma County Commissioners for y'all is everybody who comes to the United States government uh, United States because free travel to go through all these places so they're interfering with your roads too which is one way I could I could tell you you all have a comment right on something like this you all have an enforcement power Wherever you're listening to me, if you're ever thinking or ever think your your progeny is ever going to go through those roads. Now, we do have a clue, though, in the paragraph, first paragraph, that they're claiming historic trails and roads. Now, even underneath the law, I understand, let's forget the federal connection. Historic trails and roads is making a an assertion, actually. Would the county have management rights over those? No, not necessarily. They just said county roads at the bottom of the first paragraph. There has to be a law that declares those roads that are high, historic trails and roads to be county roads. In fact, in one state, that question came up, and in 1981, they had to clarify it. They had to say that the county roads that were given exclusive jurisdiction over some of these roads were not going to be the county roads. The county had management authority, maintenance, actually, authority, and upkeep. They said those were only going to be the ones the county agreed to do. The rest of the disposed highway was going to now be considered a public road. That's where you get your public road. It's underneath the road that's paved or maintained by the county. It doesn't give the county possession. It gives them maintenance obligations. You'll also find out the federal uh, authority, the federal government agencies, have maintenance obligations. You'll also find out when you look close enough that people who use those roads, like miners, maintain those as well, but they can't charge you, the public. That's on them. And so start to work this out in what I've been telling you all these years on how this works. And we go back to here where we got some representatives that want to do assert the wrong control in the wrong places without you didn't hear authority one in those 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 uh, those par that paragraph or the title, and you didn't, you won't go through and hear anything as far as uh, an authority anywhere relative to what they're trying to claim to do there. What's interesting, and let me move over here because it's happening in Colorado. Captains everywhere over the county is because people don't listen. Colorado County using RS-2477 claims to gain jurisdiction over roads on federally managed land. RS-2477, folks, is the restatement of the 1866 Act, Section, what, 8? That's where the, the, the highways were granted to those that would make them. How are you going to assert through RS-2477 a jurisdiction? That makes the question, doesn't it? I'll tell you that it does. I've told you this before. Let me go back here to Mont Montezuma. They will not, they will continue to revert to the 2477. You will find out in these stories that the federal government sits back, I think they laugh at these people, and they say, you have to make a claim under 2477. And they're telling everybody the truth. What they're not disclosing, and I think is an open fraud, is that the, the claims, when you say historic, and you say that there's a highway that exists, then you're talking about a disposal. And I'll suggest to you strongly to go look to find that there is a statute in every western state that I've found. And I, again, remember I told you I didn't, I noticed this stuff a long time ago, but I never took and collected up the proof.
So I don't have it in my hand. I just know it's there. And I can find certain places here and there that show uh, at least one state that, that it's there. So for, for me, that's good enough to continue this discussion for you. Again, it's on Jefferson Mining District uh, w website. Look for the highways, bag of law highway supplement, and you'll see in there, and I'll read a little bit of how they look, what they sound like in a coming moment. But uh, you don't raise the RS-2047 claim to gain jurisdiction. You gain, you do an RS-2477 RS claim, and I would have to say, and this is sa after 1976, because you want to make a place in the, in the public land a disposed highway from the public domain. So what happened before 76? What do we rely on? Is is not disclosed by the federal agencies, which the commissioners of these counties, and I would have to say the attorneys are advising wrongly, uh, to keep looking that they get to manage federal lands and they get to look at historic trails instead of saying, well, if they're a historic trail and we have evidence of how historic they are, let's say pre-1976, then that isn't an RS-2477 claim. That is a disposal to the use under the 1866 Section 8 law. The construction of the highways is hereby granted. There was no mode. There was no anything. There was not going to be any regulation or anything. It had to do with the primary economy establishing utility out in the public domain. And so I've got, I look at these stories, it irks me a bit. County after county after county trying to make an RS-2477 claim on Land they know is historic highway. Now, I haven't told you the real trick here yet. I'm getting to it. I told you before. It's not like it's secret. It happened like I haven't said it. But I guess I'm here. Can you hear the irritation coming in my, in my voice? If we get done with this, we can move on to the other problems. This is not a problem. This is a, a trespass, and this is ignorance. Professing to be some power and authority. And it's never going to win. The, the federalities are correct. You want to make this an RS-2477 claim? You haven't made one. But what, what have I said is there. It's been there. It's been there for, well, well over 100 years and lots of, lots of time now in every western state. I said there is a statute that accepts that grant of 1866, which has been recodified as RS-2477. That's only the grant that it is. I have said, and I'll repeat again right now what I just said, there is in every state an acceptance of that grant. And that is called and considered a statutory acceptance by the courts. And each state made theirs whatever they wanted to do. And they could range as short as five years to seven or 15 years. I've read uh, things, there's some conditions that may happen within the acceptance that provides for the disposal by, as a matter of law. It, for, it fulfills the grant and, a, and claim. The claim is not a question. The claim is accepting and in possession to the people of your state. The statutory acceptance set a standard by which the state, remember this is all under state determination now, the rules of the proper rules that haven't been determined to be unlawful or contrary, none of which have, because they're just acceptance of a grant, the conditions of the acceptance are enumerated in the acceptance grant. Given that's the point, why are commissioners looking to manage land that they haven't, can't, haven't shown that the state has already accepted, and why don't they just go do that? It is really a fascination to me. Now, I wrote a re little email in response just to throw this out. I don't know. Hopefully someone's going to read it uh, in this article relative to the Colorado going to man going to jurisdiction over federally managed lands. They're not federally managed if they're a disposed highway. They're a disposed highway on public domain to the people of the state under state law. They also, again, they also, like, excuse me, the Colorado is Montezuma, but these stories, the San Juan uh, it's a historic forest, in, invokes the Forest Service's authority, and they claim they said that they have no claim. Well, guess what? That's not underneath the Forest Service's uh, ob object to determine anyway. The BLM will be the land disposal agent there, but it's not a claim. Let's go back to that. Twenty-four seventy-seven is essentially when you assert it, you're saying you're going to make a claim because they're taking it after nineteen seventy-six. They have all the maps, folks. Folks, this is really the irritating thing to me. Once it's on a map, that's evidence. 
So I say, keep all your maps. And that's why the federalities went through every area we know. And they, they, they went to all the historic places and all the historic museums. And they went through and they re asked people to replace their old maps with the good maps. And, and uh, unknowing curators said, okay, we got a nice shiny map. In fact, what they did is they got rid of the evidence of the old highways and trails, which are not a question. They're not RS-2477. They're the grant fulfilled to the people of the state. Now, if you have a grant fulfilling the, the disposal to the people of the state, why are you making it a question under 2477? How many times have I told you on other subject matters, why don't walk in with a question? You'll give the ability to someone else to have a say. You'll now develop the right of an expert because you were ignorant. Here we have 2477 assertions. Uh, I, I hear them all over. It, it just drives me nuts. Uh, let me respond to what I did in the, what I said again. I, I've done this before on others, uh, in, in, in the Twitter to put it out there to let people know there's a way to look at this a lot better than what they're seeing. Nonsense on this 2477 management. Nonsense. Not RS 2477 quote management rights on federal land, but grant disposed highways and trails in holding public domain. State law should already exist accepting claim fulfilled and may give county exclusive jurisdiction. And you can refer back, as I said, to Jefferson Mining District's bag of law supplement under highways and trails, under highways, a little tab. Okay, so you go in that document, and let me just read you just an example of what you might be looking for in your state law that may not be in your statutes because they changed everything over underneath the Model Business Act around the 50s. But you can find in your laws that happened probably around the turn of the century. Some happened before this, some happened a little bit after. And here's one, and the one I, we use, and it's in the document. I'll read from it. From Oregon law that we found, I found, HB 208. Enacted that. You know, it didn't have a statu statutory ORS number, does it? Nope. It's a law. Uh, section 1, all roads and thoroughfares not heretofore legally established within the state of Oregon that may have heretofore been used or hereafter be used for a period of 10 years consecutive, 10 consecutive years or more by the general public for the purpose of travel without protest are hereby declared to be county roads. Section 2. No road of public easement shall be altered or vacated except by county court in the manner now provided by law, and no county shall be bound to work or improve or keep in repair such road of public easement. This was an act approved on February 28th in 1901. Now, you hear they're declared by state law to be county roads. Some states don't necessarily do that. If a couple ones, if I remember right, a long time ago, they didn't actually state that they're county. They just worked them as they are. The point is that they, let's look at this little without protest. The protest is incumbent upon a protest lodged at the institution of the construction of the highway or trail. By whom? Well, at least by the federal government. And when you don't find a record protest in this state, after 10 years, as a matter of law, the grant is accepted and now determined and declared to be a county road. You also see in Section 2, the county shall not be bound to improve or keep repair. That's what I was telling you earlier. The county can accept and adopt an obligation to maintain, but until it does, it has no obligation to keep it. That's up to us, the people. So in those places that have on an established disposal, on this type of a law, the county may already have not management authority, but they have jurisdiction that's exclusive to the, well, in this case they're called county roads, it may not be in the county, but in this, most cases it goes to the county, the local jurisdiction. Now what can the county do? Can the county get rid of the, can the county do anything to the road? Does the county take ownership by possession of the road? Section 2 in this uh, statutory acceptance of the 19, of the RS-2477 grant, remember, it's accepted, and it's not a question now under RS-2477, RS says no road of public easement shall be altered or vacated except by the county court. 
Now you have to go to your road law and find out in this state how the county court, and you that's going to be an interest. Where are those county courts now when they changed everything? But at any rate, county court will have a due process process of proceeding whereby they could be altered or very vacated. But you'll find within that context, as I said, you can alter them as long as you don't reduce its ability to to move people back and forth over it, their use that was established, and that's not limited, nor can you vacate it unless you provide for the anticipated travel and future use in another place or make another place. You'll find that inside your state laws as well, under your road law. The primary disposal power of your county and the obligations of the government to you are right here. The county has no way to do this privately uh, and interfere with it. And in fact, when you go to the law, the road law, you'll find the acceptance of the grant by those that made the constructions cannot be interfered with. And that underlies the support that I'm telling you why this, you have to go through the county court to get the altar or vacation because they cannot interfere with the underlying acceptance of the people themselves when they constructed those highways or trails. Now that I've just read you Oregon Law HB 208 relative to a statutory acceptance of accepting the 247, 2477s, is it clearer now why I keep telling you anybody who believes they can need to manage a federal land is improperly looking, properly approaching the problem? The lack of knowledge here about what the disposal is is causing a problem where there is no problem? And it's giving the federal government, who we know is underneath a land grab mentality, and I don't mean just because Bramowitz wants to do that. I mean there's an adjunct foreign uh, imposition of sustainable wilding going on they, that the government, the agencies are imposing on everybody that no one understands either. This is on top of all this, why you need to be in here and why you how easy it is to stop and how this law is not an opinion. If I'm saying to you, and I am saying to you, but if I propose to you that after 10 years, anything you see an evidence of, and let's go to a map, that's existed longer than 10 years without a protest filed by whomever is determined to be a disposed highway by the grant, is there any continuing question? And since there's not a continuing question, why do the people in Montezuma County keep making it? I'm waiting for an answer. Oh, you guys can't talk to me, huh? I know you all want to, but no, it's not going to work out that way either, see? So we all have to kind of think this through. We've got to start applying what we know real time. When I'm talking to you about stuff, it's all fun foundational. There's really, I don't, I really, I'm trying, I try not to make errors, and I don't think I've found any errors. When I get irritated at any more, it's usually for a decent reason in these in regards of these things. And I'm I'm really hoping when we go back to that title. Now, okay, so you just heard me say all this stuff about this statutory acceptance. And it puts the obligation on the federal proprietor to protest if it doesn't want a road there. The absence of a protest in this state is 10 years. I've seen states that go down to 5 and 7. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I seen one was immediate as soon as they established, but notwithstanding any of that, this state says 10. If you don't find a protest, this law accepting the grant underneath its obligations, uh, uh, the obligation of disposal from the federal government through the state's uh, obligations to accept by its admission acts or an enabling acts, for those of you outside of Oregon, is the fulfillment of the grant of Congress to the people of the state of Oregon is not a management right to the county. Unless what? Unless they go through the process to accept the obligation to maintain. Does that mean control? No, there's no right to obstruct by anybody, so they don't have that right. Does it say that they can regulate out of your use? No. Does it, can, they, can they extort a use off of that? No, they've got no power. The vacate, the, and this is the way I would look at the vacation part, the exception, until they go to a public law, law a public uh, public hearing, and they show the authority notwithstanding the over, the power of not interfering with the constructors, accepted the U.S. grant. How this, how the county could put a, 
a local or the state could put a local motor vehicle code over the use of that granted place is beyond me. It's not your right to drive, as I've said before. You have an ingress and egress right that by the statute I'm reading here is granted to the people by the statute of the state of Oregon itself says that there's no authority that can interfere with that grant. Seems to me to be the better place to go. We're not talking like we, we're talking in primary disposal. The grant exists and to you, all of you at once. That's why you can't obstruct it all. If it's not up, not your right to do so, you can use that place. Is not a particular active, a particular activity such as commerce on that, on that same place over which is in, which is in the tertiary economy from which gov where which government exists and can only regulate for those within that structure and aren't and cannot step come down and touch the foundation of your nation they are now, i don't know what to tell you about all that except that's your problem listeners that's you that's the, you know, that's why I say, like, in a way, I don't want to get off on the subject. That's why sometimes I wonder about the auditors. Okay, I know you're making a point. Eh, some of you are kind of, you know, you're just in their face. You know, you could be doing a whole lot more work to establish your right to the, to the easement uh, as well. Boy, that would just throw their authority completely off. But no, you'd rather go off on this, these other things. At any rate, to get back to this point, a, a county asserting an, over the, what they know is a historic trail. Should have been there. everyone's first clue they're doing it wrong. An historic trail, I would have to say, certainly is a long time. Would certainly, in my mind, I don't know of anything that goes beyond 20 years, if there was even that much, it would be longer existing than 20 years, would comply with even Oregon's statute for acceptance, just by the fact it's on the map. If that, given that's the case, and the and these commissioners know that, or any other place, why is this a question under RS twenty four seventy seven, and why don't they just shut the trespasser, the federal government, down on its own power as a trust breach as well? Why do these counties make this a question is beyond me. Why do they allow the federal authority to obliterate highways when right here not even the county can do that without due process? And then when you look inside how they do that, they can only provide, they, if they want to vacate they, that, that place, they have to say how they're going to accommodate the flow, the use over the, the land with the same uh, utility for those that made the first road in another road. And so you see, this is not secret, and you also notice this is not authority to, to, to keep you out. And yet I, I, see, I see this ongoing nonsense in the news, and people reporting on it, and people looking on, and don't have a first clue about how this goes on, or says, that's over there. Well, yeah, it might be over there, but I'll tell you what, you ever go through one of these states, or you want to go traveling through, and you want to get somewhere, or you just have a fancy to go somewhere, and you're not a criminal. You're just going to go and have, you're going to be free. You're just going to go around your country and go look at it. You don't understand that what they're doing wrong in Montezuma is going on in lots of places to interfere with you in the future and your, and your little ones going in and, and the rest of society. You're missing it. You haven't kept the republic. You're not worthy of it in some regard. And then I, back to the wondering, why do you complain? This is in this, and this condition is indicative of so many other subject matters is why I get so disgusted at some level. And it's in the black and white. I just read you the statutory acceptance from the state law. It complies and comports completely with how the law of the land works. It has never been declared to be wrong. Given a road is ex months constructed, goes through the statutory acceptance, in this case time, without protest, why would this be a question? And if, once you know this, does the county get possession to maintain control? I hope you all said no. <laughs> I hope you all said no. But they could get a maintenance authority. They could want to be 
you know, pave it if they want it or just make it ablate it or whatever. But that doesn't stop, that doesn't require, there's no requirement here that they do that. And, and there's no, no right in anybody when they do maintain the road that they can get compensated for it like we do. We, we put tons of money into, into maintaining roads to mining claims. People don't understand all the cost here. You're talking, where's my roads? Yeah, we, we make them. We, we maintain them all the time. I don't know about where your roads are. You've, you've forgotten who owns the road. You've allowed jurisdictions to take claim. You didn't understand uh, the dynamic of when they've accepted the obligation, how to go back after them when they didn't fill the dang potholes, whatever their excuse is. But ultimately, it doesn't stop at whatever they did at the maintenance. That's just the maintenance. It's not the right to the road and why which is completely different, distinct, and exclusive of the regulation authority at the at the tertiary econ economic level, which is where government exists. And as I said earlier, you don't have a government if you can't establish, at least the ones we understand as governments, the way it were, is, is wired here in the United States of America. You can't get there unless you have foundational primary use of the land, and then the services to support that, which is a natural consequence of that creation of the wealth, uh, you don't even get to government or be able to have a government. And what the, the new imposition of the agenda that's coming in, the uh, so-called sustainable wilding all, they're actually sitting in this tertiary governmental capacity. They have life because of it, and that's all their life is. As tenuous as it is, they still get to breathe a bit because you're not shutting them down. And they're reaching down and they're destroying your primary economy by trying to call them, uh, bring them within uh, an urban setting. In fact, that's one of the deals we've been working with. They're coming back. Uh, they lied. We caught them. Uh, they were claiming uh, they know we're witnessing, or at least my colleague is right there, uh, witnessing how they're violating them, so they tried to restrain their ur urban, their, their uh, rural urban divide, non-divide. Now they're claiming to urban growth areas, and then we found, and then my colleague found where they're not restraining it to that at all. They do, in fact, intend to go across the state, and so we've caught them on on a lie. It's this adjunct imposition that is not pursuant to any law. Could care less about your laws. And because you could care less about the laws like this that protect you or how the representatives in your local counties are not respecting these disposals down to the trail, folks, for all of you. Whether you are out there or not, they're, they're there. Now, you local representatives don't have a clue about how this works, allowing the theft. I can't tell whether that's stupidity, ignorance, or, or a plan. But since it happens all over the place, I'm leaning toward the fact that it's a plan. You've got people inside the county. Certainly the attorneys are misadvising on this at all turns. And none of you are stepping in to help. And if you can't do something, I consider this really simple. Why? Because it's so clear and so black and white. I only have to read a few pages of the highlighted stuff that you can get there at Jefferson Mining District. It's given away for free. If you can't get something as simple as this, as a nation, we're done, folks. It's really simple. The encroachments are happening. I just watch them. I don't know what to do. I mean, you're just watching the enemy come over you slowly. Well, none of you else, none of all other you see. You, you complain, but you don't see it. It's transparent to you, the actual enemy. But here, let me, uh, before I go to, I get lost in my thoughts about where do I go? There's so much to say about this, and there's nothing to say about it. Once you understand asserting management rights over federal land is wrong, and yet, and then you know that, well, if they're a historic trail or road, they're already granted to the state and the use of the people, and so the federal government has no authority to interfere, and the request to make an RS-2477 claim is a trap that you don't have to make, you're starting to see what I've been talking about, what every one of you does, in uh, even this and other areas about allowing non-authority to become an authority. When I talk to you a bit about how we go through because we're being oppressed, in the forest about traveling back and forth to whatever we're doing we have right to do and you end, listen to how I'm responding to that I use these very same things to destroy whatever purports to be an authority a law enforcement they're nothing they're criminals it doesn't stop them they want to call you nuts but that's okay you have the back and black and white in your bag of law that you carry everywhere yeah it's a burden but I'd rather do that and have a word in my mouth than be uh, deemed to be some mental case 
because they know so much, whether they're oppressors or occupiers. And they're doing it because you're not speaking up. And so, I guess I still have sounded irritated, aren't I? This is such a simple discussion uh, that it shouldn't even be a question. We shouldn't be talking about this. And this, this is, has ramifications in every other subject matter relating to the public and federal lands. It's why we've had the problems. Looking at this problem is how I developed how we would get rid of, at least for now, at least set the policies up better to expose the arsonist that the federal government is in the public land, which interferes with public domain disposed. And we were, I was able to come at it sideways uh, so no one could see that as well, so that we could get people to understand that local power is there. You just have to enforce it and stop listening to these occupiers or people that are ignorant. And you, my listeners, if you will take it on, can be one of these people who instruct and get these things squared up and get the counties beyond, get your roads back, get your access back to the public lands that you can. Well, I have a different discussion after 1976. I won't even discuss it. But you hear the, you hear how it works right here. You hear how it works right there. A period of 10 consecutive years without protest. That's your standard. Why? Is it federal standard? No. This, it's a state standard that the feds have to take existent, have to acquire, have to agree to. Because why? Because they've never just been determined to be unlawful. That, that statutory exception. In fact, the courts have agreed to them in the past. So why are we walking into these federal land conditions with a question? Why are we allowing the county, why do the counties allow obliteration of roads? When you look at this in the east and you see what they're doing on the land above this disposal, it might give you a better impression on how you are going through impositions like tolls and things and how maybe that might be an obstruction that can be interfering with your under, underlying right to use the road, the highway. Why? Because you're not in that other jurisdiction where the tertiary government gave authority to a toll road company to do so. Those, those areas are supposed to be free. You'll also notice they take certain sections that may or may not be underneath the prior disposal, and they make sure they leave you with the lower, lesser route. The problem is if they've undertaken to, to keep that in maintenance, they have to maintain the increased use as well. If you knew how to fight, if you knew what I just said, you know how to fight how you take away the governmental control that's coming over trans, so-called transportation. You in the East. Is it going to be easy? No, because you got money to be made, right? Everyone wants to make money. Everyone wants to suck li life and wealth from you. And if you ignore it, it just gets worse and worse until you start having things like we see. Even in the East, it's going to be coming. Well, it comes by conflagration, I don't know. But you're constricted down and your travel is constricted down to where it makes it so painful to move that you're going to have, have to opt for what you're handed underneath these fallacious and fraudulent impositions in your life relative to what we see coming down. And we can identify them, whatever the excuse is for carbon trade, carbon change, your, your shared prosperity. Everybody will suffer together. Even if that's road diets constricting how you're going to travel through to force you onto public transportation, which will then be given the right away to make you think like that, that you have something to do. The very same thing that killed people in the West, where they constrained travel out of an area because of all the smart things they did to the road be underneath a transportation authority. Folks, transportation is the tertiary economy that only, only is amenable under government control. I just told you and prove, I hope I proved to you, your disposals are sitting in your primary economy that are supposed to be left untouched by government. And I don't know if uh, maybe, did you hear anything say, did you hear anything I've said today reading right out of the black and white, simple, couple paragraphs, that the government has any right in order to interfere with that? I hope you said no. Let me give you that clarity Another black and white that talks to the acceptance of the grant and cannot be interfered with in a section of the road law, right of way over United States public lands, is speaking to this grant. And you understand the right of way, this is not an administrative right of way as you would, as you might be told of anymore today. This is an ingress and egress grant. The right of way over the public United States public lands is speaking to the 1866 Act, or was they say what they say later was established as RS 20, uh, Revised Statute 2477. The governing body 
may by resolution accept the grants of rights of way for the construction of public roads over public lands of the United States. This section does not invalidate the acceptance of such grant by general public use and enjoyment. Uh, pause and folks, do you hear there's no authority in a government, whether by the United States in the grant, which gives up the right, or the local state, or the county having given jurisdiction over the, the, the alteration or vacation. Do you hear anything here that says that they can invalidate your right to the general public of use and enjoyment? That word use is interesting if you go read far enough. Not only is utility, it's a trust. It's the acceptance of a trust obligation, use and enjoyment. You get to use and enjoy. We had a little bit of discussion on the you know, thoughts. I don't put some stuff up. I don't know how they're going to be accepted, and I'm not going to get into a, a flame war. I don't do that. I don't get into this nonsense. But, uh, you know, a question came by, and I haven't responded to it. Keeping and bearing came to mind. They were talking about uh, making uh, decide decisions on what is, you know, about the best use of property, folks. It's simply that you have the right to 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 use it, and you do enjoy it. Keep and bear. Bear is the anticipation of the use. Keeping is another, term. it's like to have and to hold. Another discussion came up. I mean, people talk about marriage and I'm not property. Folks, to have and to hold is a property statement. It's a contract statement. And you're union to one property. You. You're together. You're a property. It's a property. And now the point is, do you have a use? Well, it should be implied that you do. But it's not when you see this kind of public use because they're telling it is to a use. It is to a, through a trust. And it's enjoyed. Uh, and they adapt the, the it lawfully enjoy. So, okay, this section does not invalidate the acceptance of such grant by the general public. How was that accepted, folks? How was it accepted? The grant tells us how it was accepted, doesn't it? And it said... July 26, 1866, Section 8, and be it further enacted, the right of way for the construction of highways over public lands not reserved for public uses is hereby granted. That's it. That's your your right to ingress and egress into the uh, the federal, the public land. The land to yet be disposed. Not the public domain, which is disposed to a particular use. You see that in the mining law, which is this same act. These are all together. You want to say this is so powerful. You get possession of the right, uh, exclusive use uh, and enjoyment of a mineral land, the ingress and egress to it, the water and, and patent and other things, which is indicative of all other land disposal. So in this little law, you get to see all this that cannot be trespassed even by government, and if there is an exception to that, but they have to make provision for you. And we also know whether or, whether or not uh, we like it or not, there's this public domain, there's a uh, Fifth Amendment right of the government to come in to do an expropriation, but as I've told you, that can be defended, because what are they talking about? The public use. Right, it says uh, not reserved for public uses. Mining is a public use. Mining is a necess public necessity. It's also a public benefit. I've got three things protecting a mining claim over just a public use right of the government under the Fifth Amendment. And so when you start understanding how this is supposed to work, you start understanding the power we have in the law of the land, not the law over the land, not the rule of law, but this land law. And every one of you has a piece of the ingress and egress. This is why if you don't have a piece of land, you still have the right to move about. You And you have the right, what does it say? You say right to drive? No. You pull the road law up, you say have the right of use and enjoyment. And no authority of the state or gov any government can interfere with that. Didn't you just hear that before? Did sec this section does not invalidate the acceptance of such grant by the, uh, by the general public for use and enjoyment. How else are you going to enjoy it but use it? No, I cut, as I think about that, I'm saying, well, this is another gun. I just handed a, a bunch, of, a loaded gun to a bunch of children. You just don't throw this out there without setting up the parameters so that you can make this thing work. I've given you an answer here. How it turns out that you actually apply it and get it to be received may be a whole different thing than the knowledge of what I've just given you. 
Knowing of a situation does not allow you to properly avoid it or properly engage it. Why knowledge itself is not power. And so, I've just given you over an hour here on this subject. It irritates me to no end because this is the crux of every other problem I see across this nation on any other subject matter. And so, if I can see it applicable across the board, why isn't it, a, if you need a model, why isn't this the model of how you look at this, understand it, and apply it to all the other things we see that the government encroaches upon and, are, and allows others, to foreigners, to infiltrate and take from us? It is just a mind blower. Now, as I talk to the others, and there's another story pops up. Mining industry grapples with costly climate ultimatums. Metal producers from miners to smelters are grappling with increasingly tough and costly environmental demands imposed by banks seeking cleaner investments. Right there on the top, we see the problem. But they've also, in the mining industry, they've also are using a need of uh, miners in order to how they, how they extract minerals. There is a condition that happens. An individual miner, uh, entryman, may find a valuable mineral deposit, but it's so costly to extract it. He either pulls some people together, like a corporation, mining corporation, or he has to sell it off to a bigger, bigger company to do the work, or he has to get money. And so if you look very carefully in these laws about getting natural resources and minerals and metals to you, there's a pretty nasty business in between, which doesn't get noticed. But you see it here, and now we've attached on top of that a so-called climate ultimatum. So when I tell you that they're coming after your primary disposal in your lands, and they want to interfere with your highways, which is the primary disposal of the lands, and they're doing it to rewild the place, and that interferes with your primary economy, which they should never be touching in that regard at all. Notwithstanding the watershed, when it's not properly done, the watershed harms, and you see that in Paradise, the fire. Talking the watershed now, the drainage into a main river, uh, tributary. Uh, there's a climate ultimatum done by lenders. When you read through this story, though, you find out that what this imposition does, that the big guys do, the, the big miners do, the mine operators that can afford it, they accept it and they take a 25% increase on any loans they need to develop the capital investments that they can use to mine the minerals out for all y'all that have in your phones or your computers that you're listening to me now on, or which is your phone. And what they do is these big lender players, the international players, start putting out these in, the infiltration on the money which develops the minerals for you. And what they admit in here is that the, the little miner, the juniors, or less, the individuals, entrymen, it's going to cost them more and they may not survive. Because you have to take, if you can get the money, you're going to have to probably go 25% more to pay for this carbon climate imposition, this fraud, if you didn't think it's costing you more. Here's the admission that everything that you're buying now is already having to pay for this fraud, climate fraud, carbon fraud, whatever, all of this adjunct policy imposition of international international will upon the law of the land of the United States, and no one understands how this works, and this is just another aspect of it. The answer here actually is, okay, don't go get the money from a lender. In practice, though, that's not, you know, there's a lot of money in the bank, but you got to dig for it. And it takes money. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of money that takes to get the value out of the, uh, out of the, out of the rock. And, and lending is how part of that works. The lenders of which are now imposing, and they claim here, a 25% increase in meeting these climate objectives which juniors and independents cannot meet. So I want to point this out. This is an attack, if I look at it, when I look at it this way, on primary economy through tertiary lender impositions of a fraud that you think, oh, it's climate change, it's Greta. No, it's, it's happening in your country right now through your fiscal condition, your tertiary lenders, who are imposing upon the mineral producer, and it'll be on the farmer and everybody else, every produ all the producers, and you see it's 25% more that the big guys can handle and the mom and pops can't. In other words, what I, I equated this, I, I think I did a Twitter on it, 
uh, they make a conversation, you know, a statement in the article. Quote, transition may prove overwhelming for small producers. Large companies are playing a long game. Another quote, you may have to take another 25%. And I and that's to the lend getting more money to operate. And I say that's just definition of monopoly and lender profits. And then I assert the question in the Twitter, which I want you to focus on: How you get affected by climate change now? You, you're so di you're most of, even I, I I don't I don't deal with the minerals except for my, the claim. I don't really deal with production like we see has to happen in this in this world of any mineral, not just carbon, not, but not just shale or whatever they want to do, coal. Uh, and I ask the question now, you see this is a monopolization of the minerals control and lender profits. Based on what? See, and I ask the question, when does operating under the color of UN sustainable green climate change frauds rise to a national security threat? Now, you heard me talk about national security. I talk about it all the time, how they're using it as an excuse. I also told you you can use it in order to address these certain problems, bring things up in a substantial way to get, eliminate the cost in your life and the destruction. The way the minerals work is it takes the little entryman in order to go find the minerals, and it's just a natural progression to move up the chain until someone's big enough to handle the job if it's too big. It just has to, it's just It's done that forever. In fact, I've mentioned that was my criticism of uh, James Corbett's uh, use of the, it's neat that he used oligarch, great, I love the term, but when he focused in on what happens in the minerals and said, uh, was it Rothschild or whatever who was in there, exploited uh, the condition, no, that was just a na how this natural, this how minerals are naturally developed for y'all. The guy who did that and was smart enough to do it and understand where he needed to place himself to get that done was now vilified, and that set a foundation for the whole documentary, which I don't agree with that way. You can get the guy for other things, but not not in this condition where this story here, that the lenders are imposing climate frauds, sustainable development, international imposition on the extraction of the minerals that you all need. And you see the dynamic is actually where big corporations win and mom and pop are dead. You see the underlying control that seems transparent to most people as I see it and not and aren't, isn't responded to. And so I assert a national security threat. Why do I do that? Because uh, if you go in the law, I think it's Title 30, 1800, 181, 18 or so, right in those statutes, you're going to see the minerals are a national security interest. Go and sabotage. Go under sabotage and you'll find under Title 18, you're going to find out that that it's uh, you don't interfere with the minerals uh, that the United States could get for for its its defense. Now, if you look closely, you'll find out that your chickens in your yard are as, as protected. Why? Because that's the primary economy again. See, that's protected in the law, but we're, you're watching your politicians and your lawyers invade and attack it. And you're looking at your county commissioners who are oblivious to how simple it is to assert an authority that may not be in the county, but they can still claim that the claim is fulfilled, right? Even if it didn't, by state law, didn't go to the county jurisdiction, the state has accepted it for y'all, haven't they? And that's the power of the county to protect. Why has the county in the Montezuma County created a question when the black and white says there is none? It is a wonder to me. No, I'll go off on that it's ignorance, but ignorance is no excuse then, is it? If it's a plan, you got some treasonous uh, bastages, folks, right right there in Montezuma. You're going to have to figure out which one. And that's why I say just go in with the knowledge, explain to the black and white. Go find, go do the footwork to find your state, Colorado's, uh, anyway, Arizona's, Washington's, California's statutory acceptance. Find a court case that meant, that's how I found out about them, that they were general. There was a court case talked about them. Oh, wow, well, they are there. Cause I do. What do you know when you don't know, folks? You just got to look. You're looking for clues. You're always looking for clues. And then I was able to track some down. This is a decade ago, two decades ago. Why was I on the highways? It wasn't even in the mining law. It was because I, the early on, I, well, yeah, we have a right to drive. And that's what I was telling you. I was reading the Motor Vehicle Code, and I had to laugh at myself. Two and a half readings through of a book that looks like a Bible with so many regulations, I had to laugh at myself. I wasn't going to find myself in that book. 
Well, now I know why. Well, I knew before now, but I knew now I know why I'm not in that book. And you probably are too. And why y'all don't assert this in earnest and properly so you don't get yourself in trouble, I don't understand. Why you let counties take away all the fundamental foundational value in the land from you, give it over to these agendas or these attorneys that want to destroy you through sustainable development, or these code hearing officers that don't understand their limitations, as I've explained you can do, and do it in mass, so there's more of us folks everywhere, I don't even understand. Why the excuses, I don't even understand. And so we have the, the tertiary economy, which is lenders, aiding the big boys, which is actually down in the, the primary economy for production, collaborating or cons in conspiracy to, de to destroy everybody lesser than them, as a monopoly, to the profit of the lender and the tertiary, which is regulated by the government and the tertiary economy. Right? So this is all really consistent stuff. And then we hear this. DOJ accuses J.P. Morgan's precious metals trading desk of being a criminal enterprise. Well, I haven't followed that up. This is an older story. I haven't followed it up. But the point is, this is tertiary regulated entities that are attacking, through this fraud, the value of the minerals that come out of the land that come to you. For what? A profit. For what? To give a to manage control of the make monopoly to the big players over the little players. If I can call them players, it's it's you and me ultimately coming down. Those of us that are specially wired to go do develop the and maintain the 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 natural resources that are around us. And yes, there's some that won't and don't do it right, uh, but that's not everybody, and that's not. It's really not a problem because we find out that, as I was telling you before, a miner with a private property right, as a private class of private property ownership, is a pre-suppression element. Private property ownership is a pre-suppression element to forest fires. So when they keep your miners out, or any other public, uh, any other private develop, uh, um, yeah, n natural resource developer, they actually harm your nat your watershed. Now, your watershed is where all y'all live, whether you know that or not. But here we have, in the tertiary side, the DOJ going after J.P. Morgan. We all, you know, we've heard these stories before. Uh, well, well, who would have thought that J.P. Morgan's precious metal trading desk is a functional equivalent of the mafia and that its one-time leader, Blythe Masters, was the mafia's don? Well, I don't know of anybody who looked at that that didn't think that was going on and wondered why the government hasn't stopped it. And when you see this stuff that's not being stopped and it's affecting the foundation of your nation, your primary economy, which is the wealth driver and the extraction of the things that you need in life, you have to know there's a plan to destroy you, whether or not you can identify anyone or whom or the uh, the headquarters. I tend to find a couple of headquarters just because they keep coming up, so it's easy on that end. I don't know all the subject matters, though, so I couldn't tell you that we can confine it to that. Those of you that are interested may find your own, find your own headquarters, but it's there, and it's to def and it defeats your existence. And I'm not really, I tell you, I'm not that much of a patriot the way I hear it discussed, and I'm not a nationalist either. I don't know what I am regarding that, but I do see law as objective basis. Honored is a peacemaker. And that's where I rely on this, and that's where I keep pushing. If we can get our laws back in order, maybe we'll bring more peace. And as long as we're divided, we can't do that. We're not going to be living in any peace. And so we have these people that are interfering in ways and coming in adjunct collateral attacks, and we don't stop it. We're asking for non-peace. That's all I can suggest. But we have DOJs that take so long to come after things that most of us... Uh, see from for, uh, going on in the beginning you have to understand there's somewhat of a plan remember they do they, they keep the they keep your temp they take your temperature all the time i don't know where they're keeping that temperature taking that temp but they're taking your temperature to find out how much you're going to respond and apparently they came up they they jp morgan reached too much they were they didn't get their 25 percent was they wanted more because 25 percent on the big boys with the mining see that's okay for climate, but here I guess they're they're actually taking more because that kind of stretched the limits for even the even the thief of the government, the thieves in the government themselves. Or we got a 
inter-mafia hit going on, and that's one way one, one faction's controlling another. I guess we could look at it that way, couldn't, couldn't we? But, so we have the J.P. Morgan is, is fixing these prices that your, your mineral producers get their money from for doing all the work. And so if they can fluctuate that, you know, you don't think their, their databases are tied into those. They are the lenders, remember? You don't think this is all tied together? They, they know what to give you on the, what you exa- extract from the minerals out of the ground. At the time, you have way o- big overheads and 25% more on your lender accounts for, to get the money to do this. I hope you see that game. And so this is just a, this is just part of this scam that's going on. Again, the tertiary economy is one of theft and extortion that we believe it's supposed to be checked. This is a story where we assume it's being checked between the, the lenders, the bankers, the so-called bankers, and the DOJ, the government, but that's really, in my mind, is not what the case is here. We're watching an attack on your cover, on your country, and the DOJ is part of it. A lot of people will say, oh, yeah, we know. Well, stop it, folks. Figure out ways to get at it. This is a, we have a short time. I told you we have a short time. I don't know how long Trump lasts. He's not the end-all, be-all, but he's, he's, a, he's able to cause enough uh, distraction amongst themselves that I told you this was going to happen, too. They're going to have enough distraction amongst themselves. We're going to see what we can do while the distraction is going on. We'll use their division against them, hopefully. Well, that was maybe even too much to to conceive of for us. I knew it was coming, but the numbers didn't pour in from our side to do so. In fact, we saw more influx of our side actually doing it against the doing it to us. And in particular, I saw that that happening in the mining interests uh, with a, with one organization that was completely ignorant of, if not a plan they knew, completely ignorant of the dynamic that they were creating to to harm other people in this primary wealth driving sector, which supports all y'all. Uh, it ultimately, it's not it's hard to see that because it's only a small percentage of the population. But this is where the real wealth is. Everything in the tertiary is all fiction, remember? And so you see the fiction attempting to destroy the wealth or monopolize it into a narrow uh, uh, narrow areas that are, uh, again, if you look at the big boys, they're all controlled by the attorneys. And they only do what makes a profit. They don't do what might uh, might be good for the environment or good for the worker down below because the miners are, like let's say miners and ranchers, they're the workers, if you will. They're the ones that are going to be affected by their own uh, ignorance or stupidity or lack of proper action. This is a, This is where you start seeing the difference between Corporate, uh, where you see fiction uh, versus uh, and where there's limited liability and, and strict liability. Strict liability is in the, in the primary economy. Limited liability that exploits and parasitically eats off of you all, uh, all your life for the most part is in the tertiary economy. It deals in fictions and you uh, then believe you have that mil- fictional millstone around your neck, but you won't listen to the guy behind the woodshed that says, well, just tell them that they don't have the authority like I just told you. I read it to you. The government in the tertiary economy has no authority to interfere, at least without replace or replacing an, an equal an equal uh, trade. Uh, what you do in the primary sector, which is your ingress and egress, is what we talked about earlier. Simply that. You think it's your highway law? No, it's not your motor vehicle code. We're talking about grants. We're talking about reinstituting and reaffecting uh, for you the obligations of government to you, not its it's plunder and, and licensees, the licensees that have the crime, that can come out as a crime against you. I've been telling you, really, all this is always sitting there. Uh, the DOJ coming against the tertiary exploitation. I don't know why they're not going after, why aren't they going after the climate fraud imposers that are going to increase the costs of the, uh, of minerals now, if you're going to try and get the capital to ex- extract those. Why aren't they going after that? It's a fraud. So you see in the stories I'm telling you, we're seeing one gets hit, the other one doesn't. The other one is, you know, it's it's just as invisible to most people until unless you, now you know. But it interferes with this primary area of your life, which you are dis, you're disconnected from. Most all the listeners are disconnected from them. Some of you that got into growing uh, hemp or whatever uh, are getting more connected to it. But then again, you're focused on that and not focused on protecting the right you have to have already done that, right? So you're just living on the largesse of what? The, the tertiary economy, the government, giving you license, right? So you, 
You can complain all you want. I see a little bit different story. I don't judge you all, but I just see a different story. I see why you can't. You can complain, but then you are complaining only because you want to continue the problem that you profit by. And I don't know what more to say. I say profit by. Boy, I don't know. I'm looking now. When did I profit? Not only me. I mean, just what I do. What a, the thing being being in an extraction industry, mineral extraction industry. When have we made a profit? We haven't even really got to going yet because of all this nonsense. How wrong this whole thing is. And we're not asking for anything. I tend to go at things that are not to ask for much. We just got to do, if it takes a shovel to start digging in the bank to find the mineral I need to sell to someone to give it to you, well, then that's what I'll start with because guess what? I get to do, I can do it with a stick and I can start making wealth. I don't need the fictional world. You want to talk about natural law? You want to talk about hardship? Yeah, let's start working there. And we all need to kind of really return to that in some regard to retouch, reconnect with nature, if you will, our nature, the nature of the nature, the primary life's blood that we pull from that is exploited at every turn above the service sector. And I say that with hesitation because the service sector can rip people off too, but that's just the way, that's our dealings with people. So you got the primary economy, which is your, which is your wealth, your actual wealth, and your the, provides for your needs, your food, fiber, materials, manufacturing is inside that as well. It's not commerce. Then you have the service industry that, rate, that helps to produce to support that primary economy in producing the goods that you need, the uh, raw materials that you need. And some of the manufacturing of those raw materials is the service sector. That's, that's the secondary economy. Then you have the parasite economy, the tertiary, which is where the government sits, all your CPAs, all your attorneys, uh, your, your academia, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Now, the, that can help the lower but normally it's parasitic and we don't get it. We used to have the academia helping, but now they become a tool and a weapon against us. What we sued in 2013, for those of you that just, I just want to keep focusing on you, this is identifiable. It's, it's in the world against us. It's, this like academia is not an education. It's not, not the, the tertiary aggregate helping to promote its, its raw materials production. It's, there right now to subvert it and you really all should be seriously concerned and even more to the point that you start to pay attention more and even more to go do something like i've been saying to do i can't imagine hearing that all your roads are yours and how there was no right to uh, interfere with those even just to establish first you establish that who the, has the authority uh, to call the roads who they are then you say that the county has the obligation to protect you then you finally maybe get to the point where you start showing what I'm telling you now, which is this motor vehicle code uh, imposition, which is wrong uh, as applied to the production class. And why, when you look very carefully, like a log truck, a log truck coming out of the mountain. I understand, and I've been uh, a couple of good log truck drivers, when they were running, uh, they said, yeah, their their log trucks had different fees and different registration costs. A lot of times it's just the cost of the filing uh, to identify they were coming from a production to a manufacturer over that same truck when it had a bin of chips, which is a commodity, going somewhere. And I said, see there, the, the, you've, just, you've just proven to yourself what I've been saying. The extraction of natural resources and uh, raw materials is not in commerce. And, and so we, there's proofs if you look very carefully. And then if you keep track of these, you, and, you, and you, that funny word jurisdiction that I notice is coming up all the time, the jurisdiction, the power of authority to decide. This is coming up. It's been something I've been talking about. When you so focus on who has it and who don't and why, really the why, then you have an ability to address this. And let me move the jurisdiction. Natural resources. Don't affect someone's natural resources because it's a crime. It's a war crime. As I told you, we made it a, a comment to the the DEQ of the state and said, uh, based on an Israeli theft of gra Palestinian gravel, no less. We should tell you something, too. The theft and use, the use and enjoyment of Palestinian gravel was a war crime. That's natural resource theft. And now something else that's stuck in my craw, the little crawdad that I is. This thing back in Syria, I told you that Syria is this carnival mirror. 
and it's reflecting back. What the government's going to do out there is a distortion, but it's going to be reflecting back that it's going to do the same to us. And I guess because I've had to fight this thing this whole time and try to figure out ways to have it not consume us, it forces us into consumption instead of being the product producer we should be. Uh, the story in, it was coming through the, uh, the Twitter or through the news, whatever it was been coming through, about Trump was going to move out of Syria, finally give their land back. He decides now he's going to send troops to protect the oil from is is. Now he says he's going to keep the oil. Trump revives charge slogan for new Syria troop mission. I want to read the story. I, what do I say? What do I say, folks? Well, you interfere with someone else's natural resources, you're a war criminal. I've told you that's a carnival mirror for the United States of America. The agencies of the United States, as you see the federal government fighting the county over some ignorance that the county has over the use of the highways and trails, which is already granted to the people of the state, is this attack on the primary economy, is on the granted disposals to you, the people, is a war crime that the United States government is doing against the people of the United States. The lack of ownership of these minerals in places and interfering with it is a war crime, folks. And I just don't understand how we don't put this together. This is not just, oh, they're not giving my right. No, they're def they're trying to destroy these government. United States government itself is trying to destroy the United States of America. You know, these, I'm using these terms loosely for those of you that want to get real technical. I'm just trying to discuss something. Principles deeper than you'll understand ever understand if you're still on that problem. That, as I told you, allowing the 9/11, the, the allowing the towers to go down and not protecting was the declaration of war against America. You saw the PATIOT Act come out. I told you this was all here, and here we have again evidence that, that it's in fact the fact. They're going to keep the oil. Trump is going to keep the oil. He said that going in. He said going into the the thing, uh, the uh, election. If you go into a place, keep their oil. That's a war crime, folks. If he's going to do it there, folks, they're going to do it out here, into the United States of America. My answer to that at this point is, it's not your oil, punk. It's not your oil, punk. The theft of foreign natural resources is a war crime. Is noticed by all of us in the United States as producers, and anybody else, but more importantly to us as producers, because we're talking about natural resources and natural raw materials being produced, that this president has now declared the claim on natural resources of a foreign country has no right to be in. Makes him a war criminal. Which continues as a reflection, the violation against producers that I've been involved with myself for since 2005 on a question. Well, aren't these regulations wrongly applied? Yeah, they were. Found out 10 minutes. It took me 10 minutes to find that out, folks, in 2005 after being asked. How hard this is so much. Uh, this is before I even knew anything about it, folks. I think it's time for the president to give Syria's oil back and end the war against its natural resource producers at home. My humble request, make my day. If you don't understand the seriousness of the reflection of the what we're putting out in the world and what it looks like to us, and then from my perspective, it's been happening to us. I told you it doesn't look like it. The detroitification of America was happening elsewhere. The bombing doesn't look the same, but it has the same effect. The theft of someone's oil, natural resource, ostensibly protecting it from ISIS, from which NATO and U.S. and Israel created, of which the president also declared to be ended. ISIS was dead. Today we find out, oh, they just killed ISIS's leader. But I thought ISIS I, is us. Remember? ISIS is us. I thought ISIS is us was declared done. Whom are you protecting the... What reconstitution are you protecting the oil uh, from them and not giving it to Syria? And so the additional question all this, to make you not a war criminal, 
President Trump. Given that you have the firepower to keep ISIS from the oil, when are you going to allow Syria to go ahead and get it? Or do you intend to remain? I guess I'm talking right to you, President. Are you listening? Are you going to maintain your war criminal status on this decision? And I can't tell you how disgusting that is to me, but it's really disappointing more than anything else. Because you move yourself from genius to evil genius, and maybe not so smart, because the guy behind the woodshed seems to have figured all this out, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And what does it mean? Folks, it will mean nothing. It means nothing if you don't start to get it in you that it means something. I try to start on little things. I try to show you even your ingress and egress, from which all you auditors and all you drive-by-right people should have been turning the books to. Should have been. A, I should have had emails telling me, well, here's our acceptance statute. Here's our statute that it gives it to the county or not. And this is the one that the, the pulls it out and gives this uh, these road, the enjoyment and use to the county that requires due process, which means, if you didn't get it when I was saying it, they can't really impose a regulation authority unless they go through the county because that would be an encumbrance, an unlawful, un-granted uh, uh, encumbrance on the use and enjoyment, wouldn't it? Notwithstanding that it's a fraud in full imposition, position. I think I'm going too fast again. So I shouldn't be going too fast here. If you can't put this stuff together, uh, you need to really look, listen to what I'm saying and put it together things the way I'm saying. Start there. I tell you, I'll lead you, I'll get you at the path, the trailhead, folks. The trail that's been granted to us. It's no different than I talk about all the time. I'll show you where that is for you. Here's, I just talking to you blindly to any listener that would listen and anybody who would take this up. I lead you to the granted trailhead and say you're gonna, you can go down this and you can help to bring this back out for people. And really it's not that hard. Really, I just went through it. I just, I mean, okay, so it took me an hour and I'm back to it again, an hour and a half now. I'm back to the same problem. But see, we are a sub, we're a subservient society. We're an ignorant society. We're clueless at some level. We're lazy. I know the apathy. Uh, but you don't take it on as a responsibility because you don't really think it's really affecting you because you think it's happening in Syria. But I'm here to tell you that the infringement on the natural resource production at all levels of government, which is still only in the tertiary, play, uh, tertiary economy, is still subverting your, na your nation. And I'm saying that to you, not a nation concept. It's it's the society that you live in that you're being abused by, and they abuse you because you don't stop that with the things I'm telling you. Allow you to start in a place without jeopardy and make things better, make things right as you move along. And in the short term, it seems to me, as I see more and more of this, I've told you, the commissioner and the law is the majority. You appreciate that. Do you appreciate that when they make an ordinance, there's a majority vote? And one commissioner can outdo in the law, can outdo two that are not. It may not happen immediately, but it'll happen pretty quickly. One commissioner in the law will be noticed. And almost awed by that. It's kind of fascinating to watch that one, too. Everybody's looking for a hero instead of being one themselves. really astonishing to me. When they don't have to be heroes, they just got to apply the black and white. And I say that with authority to you folks. One commissioner that's listened to the law, the way the black and white says to do it, and done it properly has been recognized by the same president that goes and commits war crimes in another country that you don't see as committing war crimes or allowed to continue the war crimes of administration. And it's not just this president. So don't think I'm, I'm, I'm dissing on anybody in particular here. They're all no good, ultimately. And I have a little bit of sympathy for the current president being underneath the stupidity that's going on called government now. In one regard, it's good they're not passing many laws because they're all fighting amongst themselves. But they're not doing the, the work of the people. In fact, the prior work they've done was to create institutions to interfere with the needs of the people and their, their land, essentially. What things you will get, bringing you into servitude to in, in international influences. If you don't understand, like your food chain. But, <laughs> funny that I'm talking this way, but that's what we're dealing with right now. It's coming back up. The stuff we've talked about, uh, my colleague and I with a certain c commissioner, commission uh, body, we're bringing up all this stuff that they seem not to understand. Again, 
which shows me that maybe we've got some ulterior motives presenting themselves as representative of the people. But it's all in the black and white. It's all in understanding properly what's going on. Many people, well, if they understand it, I'm not seeing it for the most part. Uh, but properly understanding a condition and then properly presenting it. Not div disgorging everything you know, but finding what needs to be said at the time, putting the proper law authority, proper authority, the proper foundation before someone making a decision. And maybe if they're going to go astray, you put the threat about exposing them for the bad politician that they thought they were going to be otherwise, the, the felon that they might be, the war criminal that they might be. And, and you, it's not that you call them names. You're not, you're not saying you, you give them a chance to avoid it by giving, letting them do the black and white. Montezuma County has the, pro, has the ability now. They probably don't listen to me, and none of you will probably call them and say, you need to work this out, call, contact this, or get this downloaded, read it, and, and go do what, what, stop asserting a management right over a land that's disposed to the people, and just start, just, just take it because it's claim fulfilled, not claim to be made. Start putting these bugs in these people's ear. Help me out. Help them out. Help us out. And I think this stuff starts to go pretty quick, and there's nothing that can come against that. There's just the black and white acts that's supposed to be worked, not how you think it works and how you think it's all exalted. That'll be destroyed quick if you got it wrong anyway, and then, then you'll look bad and not be effective. But So you do it you do it slow, you do it right, you do it uh, foundational, brick by brick, uh, pe uh, stone uh, placement by stone pay pavement uh, across the rivers until you cross the torrent, and then you get to the other side, which is... Uh, how. Valhalla, I suppose, for some of you. No, oh, it's our land back, folks. It's our access to our own land, and it starts to develop the principles for proper management of the public lands, which we're backhandedly getting to try and finally get back to harvesting. So if you cut out the trees in the proper way, you don't have the conflagrations that are everywhere that they're using in California to impose austerity on you all and cause a, I just noticed, a, I predicted something else right, cause a secondary economy. Now you're going to go buy generators done in California to keep your power. Now how efficient was that at a carbon level when you have a bunch of new singular inefficient generators trying to pump out power because they're cutting it off when a local power, a power plant could have done it much more efficiently in this existing system because you allow the court to allow the utility company to not do its maintenance and the forest uh, forest service and the BLM not to cut the trees properly, that you're going to suffer this. How much se how much sense is this making on a carbon load if you agreed to that on a carbon loading problem that California professes it's doing? Now you start analyzing that and untie that, you'll see how you're being duped and you're allowing it. And you agree you're going to get that generator and <laughs> pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars or something that you got to pay for that I wouldn't doubt in the, in the future they're going to be cutting out too. They're going to find out some police power they can throw down on you. Anyway, get off point, see how fast that works. Um, I can be easily distracted. Got to put the blinders back on. So messing with your natural resources is a bigger, is a war crime. And I don't know what more to say. Uh, sabotage, folks. If nothing else, it's sabotage. Go read the eight, Title 18. I don't remember now. 1800 or 2500. I don't know. Go find it. T type in U.S. code and sabotage. Do some work, folks. Figure out this stuff. Attach meaning to what you're reading. It's already against the law what you're suffering, and yet you complain. That's what you, I don't know what to say. I don't. I shake my head. Anyway, get back over to here. And so, where is this? I mentioned 9/11. How this all came through. How the government uh, telegraphed to you that they weren't going to be any further, even even pretending to serve the people, and they were made you all uh, criminals. And that's what I told you. Even inside the, see, inside the primary disposal, it's real hard. Even if I had a twinge of guilt in me, it's real. Once I know the the mining law, uh, the grant law, it's real hard to make me a criminal anywhere on the properties that I'm dealing with, because I have an absolute right and I can defend it against everybody. Has given me the insight to t explain all this other stuff as well. I'm not victimized by the victimizer. As, it, near, if, if I am a little bit, it not it not even close to the way I may have been a long while back. And it's not because I'm being arrogant or above the law. Or I saw another story, another sovereign citizen. He repented, and so the court had mercy on him. What nonsense. Anyway, uh, sovereign citizen, you all say, oh, that's the oxymoron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. 
How do you deal with it? When they start applying it to you, how do you deal with it? How do you call them out for the crime that they're doing to you in your innocence of otherwise, right? So uh, in a grant law, as a, as a uh, mineral entryman, uh, having the right of ingress and egress, I am. Com- if I had any other doubts and any other guilts at all in that subject matter, don't come and blame me for something. I just wa- oh, that's a warning. Just don't blame me. The last guy that tried it was a ranger. He found out real quick uh, the side of the law he was going to be on. Okay, so this, it's that fast, folks. It's not even a. I don't make an argument. And I'm not bo- bo- boasting here. It's just I don't want these guys around me, and I've figured out some things, not everything, I, I suppose, some things on how to make things go a lot more efficient that I don't see your representatives in any county actually understanding, as I'm talking about your, your basic foundation of moving around the country, your ingress and egress rights by grant, folks. The use of the, the right of the use and enjoyment of the disposed land that Congress was obligated to to do by agreement of the establishment of the state you live in, which the state had no right to interfere with, was undone in 9-11, essentially, by contorting this whole thing around, putting it on its head, and now declaring you all to be a criminal, an enemy combatant, against the government that was supposed to protect you? Really? I've told you this is just... This one should be easy for people to get at, not complain anymore, but I don't, I don't see it. So... Uh, moving on here, uh, there's a Whitney Webb, a, a Mint Press, does seemingly a lot of good work. I don't really follow too much, too deep, too much information for me, folks. It's not something that I would do. I keep track and keep tabs on where things are going, but nothing uh, r- really deep. And I, I would miss a lot of points, certainly. But she she's identifying, it's a place you can go through and see, integrating a lot of things. There was a title uh, on a, a story about, here, remember, the DOJ went after the J.P. Morgan, but didn't go after the lenders for interfering with production, but it looks to be, the, be a, to me, to be a conspiracy. Uh, the, another article came out now relative to you all uh, and making you, uh, same DOJ, looking, trying to, oh, telling you it's going after J.P. Morgan, not going after the other guys, but already now coming after you, which is supposed to be protect, you're supposed to protect you, they claim. Uh, the title of this was A.G. William Barr Formally Announces Orwellian Pre-Crime Program. When you see the president stealing someone else's oil, and you, I'm telling you that they're attacking us on the uh, on the uh, d- d- natural resource raw material side, uh, being one of the people that does it, uh, we're being, if not attacked outright, any, well, I don't know, attack, they don't attack me, but we're not able to free, we have to always deal with their uh, potential imposition. That when they attacked when he's willing to go steal natural resource from a different another country, he has no right to be in. And then you see them allow the attack on the people of the United States through 9-11. And then there's a whole bunch of setup going on that I've been telling you is coming and setting up. I see a title that says that A.G. William Barr formally announces Orwellian pre-crime program. That's not even a new story in one regard. No, no disrespect here at all to Whitney Webb, what she does. I just want to point out a consideration. The pre-crime program was the Patriot Act. This is not just now announcing it. We've been given notice. This is just a further implementation. And a fascinating story. I mean, just go through this story. I'll give you a link to this, this story. Read it through. Lots of stuff to integrate. But if I looked through a little bit of it. Just too much information. I already have the, the gist, if I could say, the gist of how this is working. I don't have a way to resolve some of this, but I have a way to look forward and say, okay, we have to position ourselves so we can avoid this or be ready for the imposition. Uh, I get down through this uh, pre-crime program being now announced, which I'm telling you is 9-11. It's a P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act and, and its progeny, what's come out of it. I've, told, I've explained all this in the past. Not, not really new news and partly why I don't continue to read some of this. But a little thing came up. Uh, through the software products offered by companies like uh, Carbine 911 and through Bard's personal crusade to mandate government backdoors into encrypted software and products, Bard's new pre-crime program already has the tools for the mass extraction and storage of consumer data by means of uh, both private tech companies and public services like emergency call centers. 
though the already drafted plan for HARPA, H-A-R-P-A, remember I talked about that here weeks and weeks ago, and its proposed solution, alternative to solutions here, right? Uh, though the already drafted plan for HARPA and its proposed solution to identify mental illness via artificial intelligence and machine learning, this newly announced pre-crime program, pre-crime in quotes, program will have the means to analyze the mass of data harvested harvested organs from consumer electronic devices from carbine and other means using vague mental health criteria defines the psychiatric profession but in, in this point I told you about mental illness is going to be on the front of it I told you AI was coming to be the authority which is just not even close, that the authority will always be to essentially digitally feel the lumps and bumps on your head to define you as some thing that they want to come underneath some vague mental health criteria. I've mentioned all of this stuff, all the stuff that's in this story. It's not new. I wanted to remind you about this because what came in all this week was all a bunch of stuff all coming together that there are little things like like emergency call centers where they're going to get this information. I told you, big data, third party working with government will be your worst nightmare. Is You're seeing it here. I've suggested to you to pay attention and try to avoid as best as we can. And there's some things I think we can do here. Part of it's just not plugging in and not not allowing ourselves to be uh, sold into some some things and just doing without. That's just going to be a part of it. You're going to take, take the, res, the responsibility to, to take care of yourself. The strict liability. They say uh, things like emergency call centers. It's not the limit. You're going to see lots of technology and you have, and I've talked about all how this is implementing through a mental illness. Let me extend the mental illness now as one of the check sheet, the check marks that will be in your blockchain, in your ledger under your so-called social credit by which you have right to privilege to even function. This is just one of the line items that are being built into all this. That there, at least by this story, is announcing it's being announced to you openly. Not good, folks. They mentioned 9-11 here. I'm telling you, that's what the first, that's what the pre-crime was. You were punitively harmed by 9-11. Uh, not only just the attack, not all the story, not all the real deaths, not the destruction of buildings, however they did it. Uh, you, This was the beginning of the notice to you all that this was on the horizon. Then we got this guy, Edward Snowden, U.S. government, could have prevented 9-11. All these little stories came together, and uh, you know I'm not so sold on this guy. Snow job comes to my mind every time I hear his name. And I looked at this story, okay, he could have prevented 9-11. I'm looking for the proof. You go read this story. This is just a promotion of Edward Snowjob. He has no proof. He has his conjecture based on a place he was. Position situation is not knowledge, is not the knowing. But he's promoting his book. Uh, again, I think this is just shock treatment. I think this is a reminder of trauma treatment. Could have prevented 91 invokes all this information and people that say, see, we told we could have stopped it. Well, yeah, they should. No, they had not could have. They had the obligation and duty to not allow, have it allowed, or they admitted they never fulfilled the obligation to you as a people. But all this together, and then we get this information uh, from um, a website uh, talking about the Patriot Act. All this came together. All this is pointing you to somewhere if you paid attention, if you got the, these these lists. I'm sure these... I'm sure these sequences come out all over the place. The Patriot Act is discussed. I'm not going to have a real lot of time here to keep going through this. I want to get to the points. Read about, I've been telling you of certain things that went on in the Patriot, like your banking rights. I told you when you couldn't just go get a bank account anymore, you were pres it, 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 it says that you were presumed to be a criminal that they had to keep tabs on. That's in this story. It talks about what the Patriot Act did in a list of things, talks about the FISA court, all this stuff. It talks about the excuse of national security. It presents the case that it shouldn't happen. Yes, it should have never happened, but it is, and that's the reality. What are you going to do about it? It goes through and explains the Patriot Act. You really need to read this so you see, at least in a summary form, what this discussion is. Because you need to understand where the, the lineage of the authority that's coming from, because that's important. 
in order, when you tie this in like how I went and approached the black and white for the county, where the county says we want to do manage the federal lands and, and we want to make an RS-2477 claim, and the federalities just say, you've never made a claim. And they don't disclose that they didn't have to make a claim. But because they want to make a claim, they're saying, you know, go ahead and make a claim. In this case is on the, uh, they actually say in this, in this, uh, in this document, the people don't have never read the Patriot Act. At least get this document and read what they they highlight for you is the rudiments of what the Patriot Act is and does. Uh, although, you know, it's open for opinion on where you do what you're going to do. You need to be aware of the source of this imposition. Is my point because it's going to be all important on how you address it if you choose to address it and what's coming onto you and what it is you might be able to do to avoid you being part swept in with the herd, put into the hive, into the Borg, into your pods, whatever the heck analogy you want to do. Now, we hear this news at the same time. NBC getting is now promoting what the people dis, could not understand people doing in Sweden now. Again, NBC says getting a mic, microchip sounds super convenient. In this story, you'll hear that they're here, folks, in the United States of America, for all you thought the Swedes were crazy for getting microchip, they're now promoting it here, like I told you, anybody who saw this knows this is coming. It's now here. Microchipping is now being promoted. I see this other story. Vaccines now being used to harvest biometric identities for everyone. Big Brother merges with Big Pharma. Not even a question, but here it is. They're telling us. And then we see this story, which is, I don't even know, folks. Just, my military algorithm can predict illness 48 hours before symptoms show. Where you heard in the three stories back that they're getting this information from all all places and they point to you for like something like a fusion center. They're also getting information with these chips. They're now promoting them. They're going to now link your biometric data through all this stuff for those of you that are going to be forced to do it because you got to have your job or you got to get your license. There's a military algorithm back there that's been pr produced naming 165 different characteristics which can give you not just pre-crime but pre-health. Tie that as another line item on your digital social credit, and I want you to tell me how you're going to avoid uh, the daily, like you see, smart meters, the daily imposition of taxation upon you at the end of the day about your health insurance that they're providing mandatorily, that the middle, don't miss the military is developing this for general implementation. If you don't agree with me about Title 50, listen to that, that we also see the ID2020 program you think it's out there somewhere out in India is coming like your real ID. It's coming in the digital chip. It's going to be coming back out into the world to you underneath this big data, folks. It's this. I don't know what to say. They're going to pre-health, pre-crime your health. If you don't have the things that, that they claim you need, this is all, I guess the point here, it's all made up. All made up. They get information from these different devices all over the place based on whatever need and correlation that the industry has with the police and the government enforcement to make more profits, as we heard the prior stories. Uh, you're going to have to step up or you're going to suffer this. I hope, hope you choose the, the, the prior. Uh, Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Appreciate all that you do to keep the things going there and the jewels and, and sound minds and everywhere. The normalization of ignorance, just in case. Thank you for all the promote. The minds repeat, the, the reminds, appreciate that. That helps a lot. Uh, I'll be with you next week. Tech Nifts are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, he just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 